It's 10 a.m. out here in Colorado, so let's get the webinar rolling. I wanted to do a few housekeeping things very quickly for everyone. Uh, we're using the, the Zoom platform for this webinar, and it does allow you to interact and ask questions. There's a Q&A uh, tab in your uh, control panel. So in that Q&A uh, tab, you can send me questions, and we're gonna be interactive throughout this. This webinar, I'll be, I'll be pausing for questions as we go through, and then if you'd like to see your website reviewed, at the end of the webinar, go ahead and put in your website domain name and company name in the Q&A, and then we'll get to that at the end of the webinar. So let's jump into Winning the Website War, Four Steps to Mastering Digital Marketing. And you should be able to see my screen. If you can't see my screen, once again, uh, put a note in the Q&A, but I'm gonna be presenting a series of slides on my screen, and then in, in a few minutes, we're gonna go live on the internet and look at some tools and look at a few websites. This presentation is focused on a process, a four-step process that we've put together over the last 20 years of our work, uh, during, doing our work in digital marketing with, with hundreds and hundreds of clients. The four steps are critical to being successful online. And what I wanna do today, my goals today, is to give you an understanding of these four steps so that you can increase leads and sales from your digital marketing efforts and do it in a very strategic way with a process. And uh, we're also gonna have a chance, hopefully, to see how your website measures up and look at a few websites. And from the presentation, you'll develop a very specific action plan of things to get done. This presentation is a, a similar presentation that I give to, to Vistage CEOs around the US and have been doing this for about 16 years now. And they get tremendous value and they, they pay their dues to, to get content and information like this. Um, we're providing this information for you for free so that you can go out and, and grow your company and, and increase your leads and increase your sales. And in fact, when I do this presentation, when I've, I've done it over 100 times now with, with CEOs around the US, this is what I hear from them. This is what they want to get from the presentation. And we're going to cover these issues and a lot more today as we go through. But I want you to get a sense of of what kind of questions people ask, and you should feel very comfortable getting answers to these questions and understanding how they apply to your business. And I'm gonna send uh, the slides out to anyone who wants them, anyone who attended today and wants the slides, drop me an email and I'll send you a PDF of them and you can have these questions. So I love this quote from, from Edward Deming. I mean, it just, it's wonderful to think that if you wanna know how to be successful in your company and in your business, you need to have a process. And what happens way too often in digital marketing is we don't have a process. We wing it. And uh, we do that because digital marketing is so much part of our lives. We interact with the internet on a daily basis and we take, we take it for granted, right? And we take this, this idea that it's just there for granted. Well, we need a process. And that process is defined in four very clear steps. And here they are. And when you see this, you're going to think, well, yes, it's common sense. But in, in having worked with hundreds and hundreds of, of companies at various sizes, most of them do not follow this process. They may think about it initially, but they don't follow these steps and they don't follow the details of this process to drive results. Uh, and I'm going to get into detail on, on why that happens and how it happens. One of the most common things that happens is people start with driving traffic. They want awareness in digital marketing before they have the proper strategy and before they have the proper design and development protocols in place so that that traffic sees their brand, interacts with their brand correctly, and then converts into leads and sales growth. So what we're gonna do is jump into each of these in, in a little bit of detail. And then when we look at a few websites, we'll ask questions. How well do those websites uh, stack up against these four steps? Step one is strategy. Strategy is, is critical to what you're doing in digital marketing. Even if you're sitting down with a piece of paper and, and jotting down notes on why you even do digital marketing, that's an important step to have in strategy. And strategy drives and is foundational for everything that's gonna come. And if there's one sentence that I could summarize strategy for you in digital marketing is, is translate what you do well. And what I mean by that is, how do you meet the needs of your target market? So one of the big things you're gonna hear me talk about is that your website is not for you and your company. And we tend to think it is. When we get into this process, we tend to think the website is for us, but it isn't for you, it's for your target market. And the better 
that you can translate what you do very well for them and how you make them the hero of your story, right? The hero of, of, of what you're going to do for them, the better results you're going to get. Now, for you as a business leader, as you start to, to think about what you do really well and implement that into digital marketing, there's a few steps I want you to consider. And the first one may be counterintuitive. And that's the idea that you have to understand this thing called digital marketing. You have to learn the basics of digital marketing. And I'm going to give you a, a, an outline today. It's an excellent outline to, to start understanding digital marketing from a very high level. Because as you, as you get into this four-step process, you'll start to realize you've got to have an excellent team to implement. There's no one person that can do all these things. So if you don't understand digital marketing or this process, you can't implement the team. There's all kinds of great resources for you to understand digital marketing. And I have a slide I'm going to show you in a few minutes that has some excellent resources listed for you. One of the top resources is Google. You really need to think about Google as being half, <laughs> at least half of your digital marketing uh, um, influence, right? Because of the Google search engine and because of all the, the apps and so forth that are wrapped around Google. And what's important to know about Google is why does Google exist? What are their goals? What are they about? And, um, and the better you can understand what Google wants and why they exist, then the better your strategy can, can meet Google's needs as well. And one of the top things that Google wants is to avoid spam. And I don't, we, don't, we don't think about this much, but Google has to have relevant search results. And to have relevant search results, they have to avoid spam. So there's, there's steps you can take with your website to make sure you show Google that you are a legitimate website, you're, you're part of, of the, the, the Google Search Console, you have a secure certificate on your website, and you are a legitimate website with new content being posted on a regular basis. If you do that, then you're showing Google that you're not a spammer, which is number one. Because think about it for a second. There's nothing that stops people from using Google. If we all decide tomorrow to stop using Google, Google goes out of business. There's no contract with all the users. So Google's constantly having to prove themselves over and over again, and they've done a fantastic job of that. So your, your understanding of digital marketing, about half of that needs to be an understanding of Google. And then I mentioned the digital marketing team. So this is critical. In, in executing your strategy. Even, even if you're a one-person operation and you have a very small business, you're gonna have to build a team of experts to execute your plan. And after you have this presentation today, you'll see um, how that team is responsible for the different parts uh, in different steps in the plan. And of course, you're responsible for strategy. And you can, you can talk to marketing consultants and marketing strategists, but ultimately step one is on the hands of the business leader or the business owner that's implementing these plans. Now, the four steps are the perfect outline for your digital marketing plan. And like I said, even if you start with one piece of paper and you start outlining how each of these steps is gonna turn into leads or sales revenue for you, that's a big step forward. And then the final thing I wanna leave you with here is in your action plan and in, in your idea of learning about digital marketing, is to review your stats, to review your Google Analytics, to review any data that you have from your social media, from your content, from your email marketing. As you start to look at digital stats, you can't help but learn what's going on because you're gonna ask questions. What does this stat mean? What does that stat mean? Those questions turn into understanding the basics of digital marketing. So this is your business leader's action plan. And I put this front and foremost because you can't implement a strategy if you don't have these bullet points covered, right? Uh, a strategy is just a daydream without these tactical things in place. So if you do, if you do the, the strategy correct, here's some potential results. And I share this slide with, with CEOs that, that watch me present because from a high level, this is what they have to be thinking about, right? And this is what you have to be thinking about as well. And you've got to have solid, concrete answers to these questions, and they're part of your digital plan. And I want to kind of wrap up strategy by talking about common sense here, right? So a lot of times we get too in, in the weeds and too complex when we think about our strategy. Our strategy for digital marketing is all about a strategic translation of what your company does really well to solve problems for your customers. If, if you're not focused on that in your strategy, then you're missing opportunities and you're going in the wrong direction 
and you're going to confuse folks that, that come to your website. That's the, the most important bullet point here on this slide. And all of this has to be done in a very simple and clear way because a strategic translation that's too confusing turns people away. And you, you see this on websites that you visit. If a website's busy and cluttered and you're on your phone trying to get information, you're going to leave that site. Your site shouldn't be that way either. Neither should your social media content or any digital marketing interaction. And then the third point here is that your, your company and what, what digital marketing has driven today is the idea that you have to be an online publisher. And this is hard for people to hear sometimes because it means work. But I'm going to give you some pointers on how to, to make that that work easier uh, here in a few minutes. Um, but you've gotta be publishing new content. Google loves new content, because once again, shows you're not a spammer, shows you're legitimate, shows you're gonna be relevant in search results. It's absolutely critical. And the final bullet, bullet point is one of the most wonderful things about digital marketing, which is that you can actually monitor the results. You, and you can, by monitoring those results then, you can monitor your ROI. So you can monitor the return on what you've invested in this, in your time, and in, and in money. So that's step one, strategy. I'm gonna check and see if we have any, any questions at this point. Looks like there's no questions, so I'm gonna proceed. Step two is design and development. And once again, a lot of people make the mistake of jumping right into step two before step one is fully understood. And the biggest mistake that will happen is that you will be taking strategic direction from a designer or a developer. Now, that may not be a bad idea, but I will tell you that the best strategic direction will come from you as a business owner, a business leader, or from your marketing team. Um, and once again, with the goal being to design for your target market, not for yourself, not for your designer or your de developer. So this is a mantra that you can be talking about in your meetings as you go through this strategic process and design development process, which is, does this meet needs of our target market? I can understand why you think this is important on our website, but does it meet the needs of our target market? Let's dive in a little deeper into step two. When I think about step two, I don't think about design and development. I don't think about um, usability and, and graphics and colors and all that. I think about the users on the website, and I think about getting inside their head to understand what is their perspective of your brand and of your company. And as they start to experience your company in digital marketing, what are they thinking about what's going through their mind? And this information you're gonna see comes from hundreds of hours that, that we've spent watching users on websites in user testing. And also in looking at, at dozens and dozens of, of Google analytics uh, accounts. <laughs> so this is what people do. They form an instant impression of your company. And the younger the demographic, the stronger that instant impression is and the faster they form it. Um, folks that grew up in the digital marketing environment, and many of these people now are becoming decision makers and they're gonna be key folks that, that will hire you, right? These people make instant impressions of your website because they've known digital all their life. They, um, they use your website and they use the content on your website just like if they were reading books. They start in the upper left-hand corner, move across the site. They look at photos, ignore ads, and move very quickly to the navigation system to find value. Uh, and so what you can learn from this slide then is, does your website meet these, this kind of criteria? Is the navigation system very intuitive and easy to follow? Are you using stock photography or do you have really good photos of real people at your company and you know real folks engage with your with your business um, are you using a lot of graphics a lot of ads and a lot of banners and things like that people ignore those things because when they click on them they don't know where they're gonna go so these are the key key things that, that visitors do on websites so you have to understand this to be effective with your website and digital marketing now it's one thing what they do it's another thing what they want so if you if you engage with them and you have value, you have a simple website that, that engages people, keep in mind, this is what people want. And I know it sounds like it's common sense, but we, we forget this. They, they don't really care that much about your business. What they care about is solving a problem they have or enhancing their lives or getting some kind of convenient solution. In fact, the internet itself in the last 20 years has driven this 
you know, explosion in convenience. We all want our lives to be super convenient. Um, you can order anything on the internet at this point and food delivery or, or whatever it might be, people want convenience. So when they come to your website, is the website simple and easy enough to use so they can get that convenience or does it get in their way and make them think too much, cause them to possibly leave and go to, to another business? I also wanna stress very, very much that people want information on your product and services. They, they wanna know as much as they can and they wanna see an overview on an overview page and then also would like, for most folks, would like the ability to dig deeper and get a ton of background information on your products and services. So a good way to approach that is by having product and service landing pages with lots of base content um, behind those pages. And then finally, um, when we think about design and development, we have to stress the fact that people want value from content. Now it's true that when users are scanning the initial landing pages on your website, they're not gonna read a block of text. They'll, they'll avoid text. They're looking to scan and take in information really quickly. But once they've engaged with you and they wanna know more, absolutely they will read you know, hundreds of words of information, blog posts, resources, white papers, product background and specs. So you have to pull people in with clear branding taglines, scannable content and headers that pull people in. One of the most important things you can do, which is missing on, on so many sites, is use captions on your photography. Use taglines in your photography. In fact, some of the best websites that are the most engaging sites have awesome photography with awesome taglines. And even if you're selling an intangible service that you don't have a photo of, you know, you're maybe you're a consultant, right? Then you can still use imagery and messaging to convey the value that you're gonna bring to people and how you solve their problems. There are five elements of design and development that I want you to be aware of, and I mentioned this earlier. The navigation and sitemap is absolutely critical. It's one of the top elements on your website. A lot of times people will take this for granted or copy what they see on other websites or not give it as much thought. And another common mistake is to have navigation in place that is uh, in the language that you speak at your company, but maybe not in the language that, that users speak when they're on your website. And what I mean by that is that your, your links in your nav main navigation system have to be very intuitive to users, so users understand it. Uh, navigation um, also is moving toward extreme simplicity. And I've been watching and working with websites now since 1998. So I've seen a lot of trends come and go. And we saw the trend of the mega menus, the trend of massive navigation, and now navigation is scrunching back down to four or five main areas. And the reason that's happening is because of mobile devices and because people want something quickly and they want it now. So that forces you to be more smart with your navigation, right? If you're only gonna have four or five major links, then your sub navigation and how you organize all your content becomes critical. And you can do it, it's, it's definitely possible to do that. Graphic design is the second element to be aware of and the rule of thumb with graphic design is that it meets the needs and is appropriate for your target market. Most websites and in most marketing campaigns um, make the mistake of using graphic design elements that are coming from the eye and the mind of the designer, right? And that's fine. You want excellent designers. However, those elements will only be as good as how they connect to your target market. So start with a target market in mind and design for them. An engineering market is going to be very different from a... Uh, you know, a, a teenage market or something like that. So you have to be aware of that when you're doing your graphic design. One size does not fit all. And then development technology, we could spend a lot of time on this, but I'm going to briefly uh, tell you that, that WordPress is really the top development platform. Um, uh, it, it, you know, once you have a company and you want to own your website and you want to be able to manage your website, um, WordPress is the most flexible platform. Um, the, the, the least, it's the most inexpensive, it has the best return, and we highly recommend WordPress. And then I, I mentioned content and taglines briefly. I'm gonna talk about that a little bit more here in a second. And I wanna also mention the idea of talking to your target market and getting feedback from them on your website. Now don't ask them what they think of your website, because they're gonna tell you it's fine, but ask them to go to your site and research something. 
ask them to research your, your company and research the concept of doing business with you, or ask them to go and figure out how to contact a salesperson and, and ask some qualifying questions, right? If you do these things, then you get fantastic feedback on your site and you start to realize, oh my gosh, people really want things simple and they want things really direct. So let's do a questions check. Any questions at this point? Looks like we have a question. All right, so let's talk about this. That's a good one too. What do you think of Drupal? Uh, how does it compete with WordPress as in pros and cons? So um, when we started in website development years ago, there were, two, there were two or three basic platforms that you could build a website in. Um, one was uh, HTML, where you could code the site in HTML, or you could get a program like Dreamweaver to code sites for you, so anyone could build a website, or you could use .NET products, which were Microsoft products and that sort of thing. And in the early 2000s, um, PHP started to be used for websites, and then those, that, that technology became open source, and servers became open source, and, and PHP kind of started to take over because for one thing it was free, it was, it was easy to use and so forth. And as that was happening, people started to put together blogging websites where they would blog and they would write about their, their trips and things like that. And, and WordPress was a, was a blogging platform, right? And at that time, there were three major PHP CMS platforms that came out. Um, there, was, there was Joomla, Drupal, and WordPress. WordPress was considered a really lightweight solution at that time, really just for blogging. And Joomla and Drupal were the two most popular um, PHP systems. And what WordPress decided to do was to be much more than a blogging platform, but also super, super simple. So Joomla and Drupal had a hard time simplifying their interface and um, becoming something that was really easy for folks to use. So Drupal um, and, and Joomla kind of filled in this space of a very niche space for PHP coders and developers, and that's still where they are. So people that use Drupal and people that use Joomla tend to really prefer that platform, and a lot of folks that use Drupal tend to be PHP coders and, and folks on the more, more hardcore side of this. So the reason you would use Drupal or Joomla is if you have a legacy system that already is there and would be just too difficult to change it, or um, if you have some kind of integration with Drupal or a program or developer who really knows it well that you want to stick with. But keep in mind, if you go down the path of Drupal or Joomla, um, then you have lots of, of, of fewer options than if you go in WordPress, because you have lots of other options in WordPress. And the development community in WordPress is, oh my gosh, I don't know how many, maybe 100 times greater or more than either Joomla or Drupal. So I hope that answers your questions. <laughs> All right, so let's go to step three, which is driving traffic, building awareness, getting your brand known, and getting yourself found. The key here is that you want to drive traffic when you're ready, not before. And the reason I say that is because driving traffic takes time or money. There's no way around it. You either have to put the time in and, and, and roll up your sleeves and get to work, write content, do SEO work, and understand all that stuff, or you've got to pay to have it done. The good news about driving traffic is I, I'm going to simplify it into six areas because it can feel overwhelming, right? It can feel overwhelming. However, these are the six areas that should be part of your digital marketing plan and they're core to that. And I want to stress that the most important traffic that you're going to get comes from what you do offline. And in fact, this becomes more important every day because offline sales and marketing will produce the most qualified visitor to your website. An example of this would be if someone's going to refer uh, your company, and um, you know they've made a, a handshake with somebody and said, "Oh, go check them out. They're great to do business with." One of the first things they'll do is they'll check you out online. They'll go to your website. They'll go to LinkedIn, and that brand has to be reinforced by that referral, right? So if the referral person says, "Oh, they're awesome to work with. Absolutely fantastic," and then they go to your website and realize, "Well, wait a minute. You know, this, their website doesn't work very well, or it's too cluttered. That doesn't." jive with what I was just told, this offline sales and marketing strategy is, is critical. And in some ways, if this is all you do, and you're really not focused on traffic from other sources, a website can become a valuable sales tool for you. And I 
consult companies all the time to um, understand that your website cannot get in the way of your sales process, right? So if you've got a sales team out there selling and knocking on doors and making things happen, the website has to support that sales process and move people through the funnel. The second area is search engines. And let's, ju let's jump into each of these areas in a little bit more detail. Here are the fundamentals of SEO, these four areas. And I mentioned that you have to understand the fundamentals of digital marketing to lead a team. There is a lot of inconsistency in how people do it, SEO, and there's a lot of folks out there that call themselves SEO experts, but they're really looking for work, right? They're, they're, they, they're not SEO experts. They haven't done it long enough. Um, we've been involved in SEO for 20 years, and these are the fundamental things that have to be done on your website so that, um, so that you're relevant and you're found in search. And um, I'm gonna show you a few tools as well that will help you see how your current website uh, is displayed for, uh, for all these elements. Um, I do wanna mention, mention one thing about website content. And in fact, I'm gonna come back to that in just a second, but the website content is critical because the one factor that's, that is getting more and more traction than anything else in SEO right now is that Google wants to see fresh content coming from you. Could you imagine you know, what it must be like for Google to try to index billions of websites and you know, millions of new websites launching on a regular basis? The only way they can do it is by sorting and selecting through sites that have relevant content and new fresh content being posted. Your site needs to be one of those. Got another question came, that came through. Let me take a look. Yes, uh, the, the slides will be available for, for download after the webinar. I can either email them to you. That's probably the best thing for me to do is to email them to you. So if you send me your, your email address, I'll send you a PDF of the slides. Email marketing. Email marketing is so important. And um, the kinds of questions I get asked about email marketing um, really are around, well, you know, I don't, I don't use email and I don't respond to emails and I don't, you know, people can't sell me on email, so why should I do email marketing? Well, one of the things I want to explain about digital marketing today is that people experience digital in silos, right? So what I mean by that is that, that people have their favorite ways of looking at digital content. And there are lots of people that do read email and take action on email. In fact, you might find 20 to 30% of the folks that you email will read your email, right? And one to 5% of those would take action on that email. And you're right, 70% didn't do anything, right? We have to go after that 70% through other channels. It might be social media, it might be Google search, and so forth. What we've seen uh, in 2018 is an acceleration of this silo which means that if people prefer email, they use it. If people prefer Google search, they use it. And they don't tend to move from that, right? If people like to be on Facebook to get information or LinkedIn, they stay with it. And so you have to be available on those silos. One of the most important silos is email marketing. And it has a great ROI because it's so inexpensive to reach large numbers of people through email. Write desirable content, content that, um, um, is in line with your strategy and is it, it is in a connection with the target market. And if you do that, people will save, save your emails, they'll respond to them, and they'll share them with others. Content marketing. So I hinted on this a little bit, and I know when you look at this slide, you, you're gonna be thinking, holy cow, how am I gonna ever get to a thousand web pages? Well, go look at your competitors and look at your competitors that are highly successful, and you'll find that they have hundreds if not thousands of web pages. And it's not an accident that successful businesses have lots of web pages and have lots of Google traffic. So there has to be a process for doing this. And it starts with day one of writing content. It starts with a content plan and a content schedule and with finding a writer that can write for you. And I recommend websites like Writers Access or a digital agency. This is, you know, we have three writers on our staff that are constantly writing blogs and articles and content. And more and more now, we're writing all the content for the website as well, because it's such an important part of marketing. Marketing now is more driven by content and writers than ever before. 
Now, the good news is you don't have to do this writing. Um, it, 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 in many ways, if you as a business owner or business leader or even a marketing director, if you felt like you had to write this content, it's all over. It's not going to happen. You've got a contract with writers that can get this done. And there's lots of writers looking for work. There's been um, lots of changes in, in the media and in newspapers and in um, printed media. And these writers can write on any topic. They can write fantastic. And you've got to reach them out and develop a relationship and start producing content. Google really demands that. And in fact, um, there's data coming in now that your business is more valuable if you're a content leader. And these numbers are going to grow. So if you go to sell your company, if you go to um, compare yourself against your, your competitors, this becomes a competitive advantage and it gives your company more value. Okay, let's talk about social media. And I want to stress that social media uh, can be fantastic. It can also be something that you have to do <laughs> as a necessary evil because you may not see the, you know, the sales come rolling in from social media, but, but it is something that needs attention and there's no quick fix to it. So just like we talked about content marketing, social media needs that as well. And in fact, there are three funnels and three basic principles behind content marketing. The first one's email marketing. The second one is blog posts and website content. And the third is social media and social media content, which is the idea of smaller chunks of content and content that links back to your website and to other sources. And I also wanna stress that you have to have content in the Google My Business or Google Plus uh, uh, directory because Google is such a big player in digital marketing. And finally, I wanna talk about influencer marketing. This is, this is another uh, area that's gaining tons of traction. And influencer marketing is the idea of getting your content in front of your target market with help from influencers. And in some ways, this could be called um, uh, public relations or media relations, because you still might have content flowing through media channels right? You're the, the business journal in your city might run an article about you, and that's in some way an influencer. But the key thing here is to build a database and to add influencers to your sales process, include them in your CRM, and reach out to them. I mean, you're, so, so influencers are, are very visible on the web. They have many times thousands of followers. Uh, they have large email lists, and their followers look to them to prepare excellent content in your market niches. Some of that content should be yours with links back to your website. It's a fantastic way to generate leads. It also helps in SEO. Step four, so we're gonna to start to wind up the four steps. I'm gonna look at uh, building a team and then we'll, we'll get some volunteers to look at some websites. And I have some websites prepped to show you as well if, if we need to. So let's jump into step four. And I call this the most important step because this is the step that, that shows you where all the proof of this is. What is the performance of, of digital media? And performance in digital media is driven by Google Analytics. It still is the most important reporting tool uh, on the planet for digital marketing. It's, it's free, it's part of your Google app universe, um, which by the way, all of your Google apps, Google Analytics, Gmail, um, AdWords, YouTube, Google Plus, Google My Business, all these apps and many more are driven by one Gmail address. One Gmail address that's set up for your company controls all these Google apps. So it's critical that you know what that Gmail address is, you know what that password is, and you have access to it at your company. It always stays with your company. On this slide, I have things that you need to be watching in Google Analytics. And this information is so important that it is a KPI for your company. It's a leading indicator for your company. And the best way to explain that is, if your website traffic's going up, your sales are gonna increase. Your website traffic is going down, you may be losing market share and you may have some issues you have to address. So they're lead, it's leading indicator data. Set up a regular meeting to review this data with your team and ask questions. It'll really drive a lot of what you do in digital marketing. Now, you can't do ROI without knowing costs. So I want to talk to you about costs and be very frank and honest with you here. There's nothing to hide. 
Um, I've been running a digital agency now, Intuitive Website, since 2004. Uh, and we, we have 12 people on our team. We have salaries and payroll and expenses and all that. And I know what it takes to run this business. And I know that, you know, we produce quality work, right? So we're an experienced agency producing quality work. This is what it costs to produce uh, the type of work you need to see from your team. And you can pay this to people you hire or you can pay an agency to do it. But this is where, where the costs come in. Now, the, the, the 85 to 125 an hour, that depends on the type of work. You know, um, posting to social media is, is a different rate than you know, developing and coding WordPress sites with plugins and graphics and all that. So this gives you an idea what the costs are. So once you have the costs and you can start to run those numbers, then you can do ROI uh, examples. And I mean, I've got a couple of set up for you here. Um, to get to ROI, you need to know your average order. And you need to know then what your costs are, which we covered. And then based on your average order, you can start to narrow it down and look at your funnel. So if you're getting 5,000 website visitors a month and say 1% of those, which is average to middle, right? Average to middle type of return, you might get 50 leads a month from your digital marketing. If your sales team can close 10% of those and your average order is 15,000, this is how you run your ROI. And then of course the question to ask is, what do you control in this funnel? What do you control on these bullet points? Well, it turns out you control a lot because you can buy website visitors, you can get more traffic, you can write more content, get the traffic in. Your website can be simple, easy to use, have excellent conversion points, and you can increase your leads. And then of course you can train your sales team to be you know, a better, better converters than 10%. 10% is actually low and conservative because I wanted to show you how this all comes together. This slide deals with e-commerce. The numbers change a little bit in e-commerce. Um, and I can send you the slide if you want to dive uh, deeper into this. But the, the fundamentals is, are the same for the ROI calculation. Okay, so let's start to wrap up the slides portion here and let's ask the question, who's gonna do all the work? I wanna start with this key fundamental issue that, that is present in digital marketing and not present really anywhere else in marketing. This is the idea that you have to bring together three very different disciplines, all coordinated with excellent project management to make a website be successful. And what happens is misalignment in these areas and misdelegation in these areas leads to major problems. And two of the biggest problems that we see when these, these areas don't work well together is number one, websites don't launch. They, they take months and months and months to launch. You may have experienced that. And then number two is the website just doesn't quite get the return that you expected. Maybe it does okay. Maybe it it gets a few leads, and, and you know, but, but you struggle. So the, the key thing is that understand this first, understand this dilemma, and also understand that it's a, this is a marketing-driven project. Digital marketing is digital marketing. Even though it involves technology and design, it should come from marketing. Technology and design professionals take direction from the marketing team. That marketing team might be the CEO or the owner of your company, but regardless, that's where that has to come from. And then within this, this uh, dynamic <laughs> is the different roles, the different hats that people wear. Now, the first thing I wanna say is, no, you don't have to go hire eight people tomorrow, <laughs> but you do have to understand that there are eight critical roles that are played in bringing this together. And for the most part, for the most part, these roles are unique. They're, they're, they're not, you can't mix and match them. And I'll run through them really quick. The first role is the decision maker, the digital marketing lead. This is the person that has to make the final call, decide when a site's ready to launch, decide on the marketing plan, decide on all the different elements. This may be you, or you might be doing this with your marketing director, but that decision maker is doing just that, making these decisions, leading the team. The project manager is the glue that holds all this together, absolutely critical part of the team. May not be making the decisions, but they're pulling all these folks together. Three and four are maybe the only two that might be combined. Three is the, the person responsible for traffic, which would be content, social media, email marketing, 
search engine optimization uh, or SEO, all of those things. And then that there's another role here for the Google Analytics stats and data person, and perhaps even talking to customers and getting feedback from them. Critical roles. The first, the, the, the top four of these roles tend to be more internal to your company. You might outsource some functionality, right, in, in, in the first four items, but for the most part, somebody at your company needs to be on top of those, right? Even if you hire an SEO firm, still need that digital marketing manager. Then the bottom are the more uh, specific roles, someone who's gonna write content, uh, a person responsible for me media, which would be photography, video, and audio. There's different ways to collect that. Uh, then the graphic design elements, the graphic designer, and the technology and development person who's managing your WordPress site or your, your website. So these are the roles on the team. Now, as you start to put your plan together, you should have a name, either a company or an individual employee that's responsible for each of these. So I hope you have some information to take action. If you don't, I have some for you. So I'll send you these bullet points and this is what you need to get done. You do these things and you'll, you'll increase your leads and your sales will increase as well. Okay, let me see if there's any additional questions here. Looks like there might be a few. Okay. Yes, so yes, it, once I get your email address, I will be sending you the slides, so that's awesome. Um, and uh, more to come on that. So let's do this. A couple things, couple things to wrap up, and then I wanna look at some websites. If you'd like to see your website reviewed, um, send me the URL in the question box. So put the website in there, and then I will go to that website. But um, let's come back here. I wanna show you, a couple resets of resources. So these are the resources that uh, we filtered through over the last 20 years, um, and they're fantastic resources. Go to the website, download the app, play around with it, you'll, you'll find that there's excellent stuff here. Um, it can feel overwhelming. If you jump into digital marketing resources and start doing Google searches, you will be overwhelmed. So we took a lot of that work off your shoulders, and here's some great stuff for you to review. And then of course I have a book, which you can get on Amazon, that covers these four steps in great detail. Uh, you can get the ebook version as well. So that's, that's available too. Okay, let's go look at some websites. So let's come up and give me a second here to go to the um, resources. And I do have another question about project management, which I'll get to in just a second. But let's look at some websites. Now, when you look at websites, this slide will help you understand what it is I look at when I look at a website and some of the things I look for. So I'm gonna stop sharing the slides and I'm gonna share a new screen, which is gonna be my web browser. So give me one second. And now you should see a web browser. Okay. so. We have a new client that we're working on a marketing plan for, and that client is Cunningham Legal, and we're gonna start with this website. So this is a very common of what you see in service-focused websites, right? You see a, a nice looking logo, uh, pretty straightforward navigation structure, uh, some clip art that rotates with messaging. And so this law firm is actually a fantastic firm. They have great services. And, and they, they really care about their customers and, and have great solutions. So what has to happen on the site is the professionalism that they bring to their customers has to be matched with the website. And so one of the things that we're gonna do is update the clip art images. Like for example, this couple you see on the screen here, you can go, if you go start looking at websites and start looking especially in healthcare, dentistry for example, you'll see that couple show up over and over again because they're part of an inexpensive clip art um, or stock photography website where you can get that. These photos need to be the staff at Cunningham Legal interacting with real clients or the photos need to be much higher quality with taglines that are less than 10 words and not rotating. Because in user testing, rotating images don't do really well. And you can imagine why they don't, because the minute someone starts to take in 
content and start to think about learning more or taking the next step, well, then the image rotates and onto something else. So what people do in user testing is they go to the navigation or they'll scroll down to see if there's something of value there, right? And on this website, they're likely to go to the navigation. And when they do, they're gonna see that the navigation in some cases can get a little bit complicated. And then they have to start thinking a lot. Well, what am I gonna do here? What do I have to do here? Which is the, the thing I need? Well, I just wanna contact them, right? And so simplification is much more important on a website. So let me show you an example of a site that has done that. This is a consulting group that we work with, and you can see it's very straightforward. We enable epic business growth, book a 10 minute chat. Okay, the call to action is very clear. Nothing's rotating, nothing's moving around. I get the sense that they're gonna help me grow my company. And as I scroll down then, I can learn more about them, or I can go and, and read more information about their services or assessments that they're gonna do for me. So in, in a lot of ways, this website, you know, as compared to Cunningham Legal, is gonna have higher conversion rates and it's gonna meet the user's needs a lot better, right? And it's also gonna keep the brand for, for Cargill Consulting uh, very strong, which is the idea of we help you grow. Really quick, I'll show you what analytics looks like. So once you do a review of a site, you can go in and see the data, month-to-month -month data of traffic, how it's coming up and down. You can also use the Search Console to communicate with Google and show them that you're not uh, a spammer, that you actually want Google to index your website and you're gonna track how well Google indexes the site. Uh, this Search Console is one of the most important things uh, and resources that you can have in digital marketing. And, and many people don't know about it, don't have it set up, and certainly don't watch the data. All of the SEO reporting tools that are out there basically pull information from the Search Console. And it's the only place you can go to see the actual keywords used in Google to find your website. And I will show you the Google website. I wanna just comment briefly on this to say, could a website be more simple? And could a website that is one of the most important brands <laughs> on the planet be more simple. And imagine you know, that it takes a lot of courage to keep the site this simple. And also realize too that the few links that are on the, on the Google website contain lots and lots of pages. And not only does the site have tons of pages, it also knows that I'm visiting the website and it's monitoring my activity so that it can market back to me through AdWords. And here is our website. So Intuitive Websites, um, we've had this design for a while. We, we probably will do a refresh at some point this year. But our concept was that, you know, digital marketing is your window to the world. That through digital marketing, um, this is how everyone experiences your brand today. They don't window shop like they used to. Um, you know, the people go to the internet first and then they go window shop, right? So this is what we wanted to capture, though, because you know, we have an intangible service, we thought we would use a video behind a static message to, to show that and make that interesting. And this is a WordPress website. You know, this is a website that would have cost so much money back in the day, but, but today you can grab, um, you know, video that looks interesting, put a good tagline on top of it, and have a, a very, very nice website. Okay, so I'm gonna look and see if anybody else would like to have their website reviewed. And if anyone else has some questions, I can answer those. The question that came in on, on project management, the use of Basecamp or Trello. Um, we, we were using Basecamp. We used Basecamp for many years, but we recently switched to Trello. I think the answer to the question is, um, what does your project management need? So a good tool for, for an agency like ours is Trello, and I'm not sure if you meant Trello or if there's Trello, but but um, you know Basecamp is good if you have multiple projects going on that have different levels of complexity. But for website development, we use Trello and we use Google Docs. That's really the two that we use. Okay, so um, Luke, who's who's um, attending 
wants me to take a look at AccuSource Online. So let's go to Google and let's do a search for AccuSource Online. So the first challenge the user has, in this case me, is how do you spell AccuSource? Because I saw it, but I don't think you spell it right. And, I, and bear with me, if I'm not spelling it right, just keep in mind that this is what users do, right? And Google's giving me, so, so right off the bat, you can see Google's giving me suggestions on where, where to go. And these suggestions are based on popular searches, and in some cases, my search history. So in this case, Google's gonna spell the word correctly and, and send me to, to either solutions online or, or online. Let's go online and see what the brand looks like. So right off the bat, and you should all do this, do a search for your brand name. In fact, the most important search that you can do in Google is a search for your company name. Because remember I mentioned that folks that are uh, experiencing your brand offline are the most important folks on your website. Well, a lot of times, they won't know your domain name, so they'll put your company name in a Google search bar. And even if they know your domain name, people still search in Google first. They don't put domains up in the, in the bar, in the uh, URL section up here. So I do notice that there is no Google My Business set up. Um, that's something you might want to look into so that folks would see your, your Google listing in Google My Business here where my mouse is. So let's click through and take a look. And this is an interactive part of our webinar. So if other folks have comments or suggestions on the AccuSource website, uh, put that in the, in, the, in the question box or chat box and I will um, respond as well. So let's, let's take this site in on a very first impression. My very first impression is it's a nice design. A designer actually has worked on this site. It's awesome. It's spaced out really well. Um, I like the logo. Um, so so the, my first impression is very positive. Now the second impression is, what do they do? Let's find out what do they do? How can they help me or how can they help my clients? Maybe I wanna refer my clients to this company. So I'm gonna read the tag, like customized employment background screening. Background screening, employment background screening. Okay, I get it. Flexible solutions with concierge level care. Interesting, we have two openings at, at Intuitive Websites. We're looking to fill two openings. So. Uh, I have never thought about using background screening. Is that something that I should use at a digital agency? How can that help me? Those are the questions I would have as a user right off the bat. Industry leader, okay, that's good, but I'm, are they expensive because they're an industry leader? Um, no culture clash, transparency, pricing, single integrated platform, obsessed with quality. So, you know, I, I, I like initially what I'm seeing. I think some ways that it can improve is, and, and you know, you guys jump in here as well too, but I'm thinking that maybe we need to dumb it down a little bit. So for, for me, the question is, why is this important? How does this save me money? What are the problems I could run into if I don't do this? And when I see these four areas here, I don't quite get those answers because I don't know what no culture clash means. Okay, now, and keep in mind, people on websites don't always stop and read like I just did, but here it says that there's n that, that your professionals are US-based, never outsource. Well, so I had no reference point for that. In fact, I didn't even know that that was something that was done. So now it makes me wonder, you know, why would people offshore do that offshore? It doesn't sound like that would make sense. Um, I would always expect transparent pricing, right? Every company would. I'm not sure what single integrated platform is because I don't have a reference point for that. Here's what I'd like to see. When you use a customized employment background screening company like ours, you can rest assured that X percentage of your new hires will stay with you longer, be more productive, and cause less problems. That would pull me in because then I would say, wow, if I'm gonna spend 100 bucks on these guys, whatever, I have no reference point for pricing either. What kind of return am I going to see on that? And I, when I see sites like this too, I want to stress that a lot of the heavy lifting has been done because you have a nice design and you know, you've, you've got some, some appealing imagery here. So that's all good. It's the tweaking, the tagline, and the call to actions, I think, that 
that would take this to another level. This is good to see industries that you work with. I always like the word services over solutions, but I'm guessing this would be services. Oh, interesting, okay. Yeah, some of these icons might be better served here, right? Because these icons start to tell me what, why I would do this. We, we've had, you know, at my company and many companies have had experiences with this, you know, where that is something that would be nice to, to know and screen in advance, but how do you do it? Why do you do it? Um, and what are the steps to make that happen? And the About Us page is absolutely critical. I've written a lot of content on the About Us page. I would like to see the people involved with this company. I wanna see their background. Basically, this is where you put your resume because I'm looking, I wanna hire, I'm gonna hire people. I mean, we're, whoever works with AccuSource is hiring people ultimately. So let's see those people. Now, I did miss these icons below. So I'm not sure if they go to, I would, I would prefer a thumbnail approach so that Rather than having to click again, I could scroll through that. And in user testing, people would rather scroll than click. And you do the same thing. You'd rather scroll than click. Easier to scroll on a mobile device. When you're scrolling, you're not clicking and leaving and wondering where you're going, that kind of thing. Um, and here's a few folks. Okay, this is awesome. I, I don't, I mean, photos are nice for me too. It, may, it says so much more when I see the photo of the person as well. Um, but uh, that's AccuSource. I, you know, good, good job on the site. Of course, seeing the Google Analytics data would, would say a lot as well. And um, you have, a, it looks like a very straight, straightforward conversion point because someone who is interested in your service would become a sales lead. And hopefully they have, yeah, here's the form they can submit. Keep in mind, if you want people to convert quickly, your form should be very simple. If you want to qualify people, and, and, and select people out that you don't want, then your form would be longer. This, this would tend to be a longer form, okay? You know, a, a shorter form would be, would have all these things, but less required fields, okay? All right, so let's go and see if anyone else wants a website reviewed. If not, we're gonna start to wrap up and I'll just put it out right now if there's any final questions that you guys have, shoot, shoot them. Otherwise, send me your, um, send me your email. It looks like I may have some, something in the chat. Okay, we got that taken care of. Okay, well, if there are no final questions, then thanks everyone for attending. I hope you, you got value. Um, just a reminder, I'll send the slides out when I get your email and uh, do keep in touch with us. If we can help you with your website, we, we'd love to do that. Otherwise, Make it a great rest of the day and great rest of the week and, and keep in touch.